loves this is kia and welcome to the cosmopolitan allure channel today's look is all about aquamarine for the march birthstone which is aquamarine um, for anybody who has had a march birthday happy birthday if you haven't had one yet in the month of march happy early birthday i'm wishing all of you happiness love and health and if you're curious to know how i got this look Please keep on watching. All right, as usual, we're going to start with our lip scrub. Today, we're going to use the Fenty Beauty Lip Scrub. My lips are, they have dry skin. So, we're going to use this today. I want my lips to peel while we're doing this. For primer today, we're going to use the Huda Beauty Primer Jelly. And I actually really like this. It's very hydrating. It kind of feels like you're putting water on your skin. And as you can see, it moves very water-like. And so I'm going to go ahead and rub it into the skin. And typically when I put on primer, I like to rub it in the skin to sort of give my skin a massage while I'm rubbing it in. Pamper yourself. Take time to pamper yourself, you guys. So we're going to let that sit for a couple of moments. So it can sink into the skin. Remember, you guys, you get the best payoff from your products that go directly on your skin. If you allow them time to do what they're supposed to do, let them dry down, let them soak into the skin so your skin can absorb all the benefits that your primer is supposed to give you. As you know, primers, there are all different types of primers you have hydrating primers, you have mattifying primers, you have primers that primarily focus on skincare. So whatever type of primer that you use, please let it have time to sink into your skin and do the work that it's supposed to do. Um, I would say give it about a minute. If you have two, give it two minutes to do the work that it's supposed to do. Okay, it's been a couple of moments. So now we're going to go into the Huda Beauty Faux Filter um, Skin Finish Buildable Coverage Foundation Stick. So I have the color Toffee, which is 420G. And as you can see, it's just, it looks somewhat like a lipstick applicator, just a long lipstick applicator. And you just roll it up. And so... I've been struggling to find a color match in the stick. I think this will be okay. I was 410 um, brown sugar in the original format. So this is that they upgraded and expanded their line as far as shades go. And um the original formula so it was a liquid foundation at first and the original foundation was a very thick um a very thick consistency and it was for matte coverage so it was really full coverage in the sense that some people wore it every day but it really wasn't I would say a full coverage um foundation it was more so if you had a special occasion um, doing a photo shoot, you would have no, I mean, it covered up everything. It was like magic in a bottle, but it was heavily fragranced. Oh, this might not be such a bad match after all. And I washed my sponge today. I'm using the Beauty Bakery sponge. 
and I typically don't wet my sponge because it makes it too soft to move around product I typically use my sponges dry um, most people that you see will use it wet but me personally I prefer to use mine dry okay so this is really buildable coverage like they say I was being too heavy-handed and when I'm looking down y'all I have a mirror up under my phone so I'm just looking to see how the coverage looks and I will admit that it is very buildable coverage um, and this is my first time using it so I was expecting the coverage to be more like the original foundation, even though I know it's not the same in my mind. I was expecting it to have that full coverage, um, that same full coverage payoff. And it's definitely not that. This definitely is a buildable coverage. And it's good coverage because I do have some hyperpigmentation down there and it did cover it. I can still see it peeking through a little bit, but that's fine with me. I'm not a person who wears makeup on a daily basis. Um, I'm currently working from home in my everyday job and I don't get on Zoom calls every single day. So I don't put on makeup every day. And so I want to go back to my original color, which was brown sugar, but um, she did change the color format, or excuse me, the coloring of the formulas um, in this round, in this concealer stick, or excuse me, not concealer stick, but in this foundation stick. And when I looked at it, four, 410 was a perfect match for my skin. Um, the description said in this new foundation stick and in, in their new luminous matte, um, formula that the brown sugar had been turned into more of a golden. And I'm sad about that because I feel like my skin is more neutral um, and that's one thing that I've really struggled with in trying to identify foundations that work for me. Um, it wasn't until I got Pat McGrath's um, foundation, which is an exact match. And in Pat McGrath, I am um, shade 18. I can't remember if it's light medium or medium 18. I think it's medium 18, but that is an exact match to my skin. And when I was reading the description for it, it's an olive undertone. So after that, I started trying to find foundations that had olive undertones. And every time I match myself to an olive undertone, it is an exact match to my skin. So to me, I don't see olive. I see more neutral um, because I know I'm not pink and I thought I was yellow. But um, anytime now that I feel like I try to get anything that's golden, it looks a little bit orange to me. And this is not like a bad match by any means because I'm not a person who wears like low cut things too often. So most of the time, nobody is going to be really paying attention to if it's an exact match per se um, to your skin. You can blend it out and make it work. So I like the coverage that it gives that much. I can definitely say. It is lightweight. I don't feel like I have anything up under my eyes or excuse me, on my skin in general. But 
not up under my eyes, it's not tight. It did take a little bit longer to blend out than I thought that it would. But again, I think that's because my sponge is wet and I don't typically work with wet sponges. Um, and if it is wet, it's not like fully wet. I might wet like the tip of it, but not like the whole, not the whole sponge. Um, but I do feel like I do have a flawless application of it. And I do like the coverage. I just want to find my color and that's the only thing um Huda Beauty doesn't specify olive tones in her foundation line so I opted to get churro which is a shade right before this so they put a shade in between brown sugar um which is 410 G and then they put churro which is 415 N which is supposed to be neutral and then they have this one 420 G which is toffee um and it's gold a golden undertone and so churro is supposed to be the neutral version of this but I've also worn churro too and churro gives me this same vibe it's still very orange for me and like I said this is by no means I feel like a super bad match um on camera it comes off much more orange but in the mirror it looks like a decent match and it could just be the lighting itself but to me on camera it looks orange when I look at myself in the mirror it looks like a very good match like and it could this might be better for me once I get a tan I feel like it will be an exact match once I have a tan but as of right now because I am in my palest state um it's just not the match I was looking for. And I don't want to buy brown sugar and it's not the right um, undertone. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think I should try buying brown sugar or not? I don't know. I'm on the fence because I'm not sponsored. So I pay for these out of pocket and I don't want to pay for a foundation that might not be a good match. I could go to Sephora and get color matched, but since I've moved to another city, the closest Sephora is like almost an hour away. So I don't feel like making that drive <laughs> um, to Sephora to get color matched. I don't know, you guys. I do know Sephora is coming up with their um their sale their semi-annual sale so i might get it during the semi-annual sale that way if it's not a match i won't feel bad because i got it on sale so for um for concealer today i'm going to be using the pat mcgrath labs concealer the skin finish concealer um I have a new shade, so I got um, light medium 16 before I had light medium 14, and whenever I wore it, it looked fine, but it was just a little personally too, um, too light for me. And so this time when I went to get concealer, I'm starting to get more knowledgeable when it comes to um what i want to look for in my concealers and i'm just taking that same sponge and going around and as you can see i don't use a lot of concealer at all uh, i don't have like severe dark circles up under my eyes or anything like that so i try to I try not to use as much makeup as possible. It's getting warmer outside and I sweat very, 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 very easily. So I want to apply as little makeup as possible. So if I go outside or, and you know, with um, things being the way they are, a lot of events that would typically be inside are going to be 
outside and things of that nature, even with the vaccine coming out, just as a precaution. Like if you had a baby shower, I would imagine you would hold it outside, you know, just for the safety of the mother who's carrying somebody, um, you know, until things get a bit better. But um, so I feel like a lot more events since it's summertime are going to be outside or excuse me, going springtime going in the summertime. Um, and so I want to create a makeup routine that I can wear outside and know that my makeup is not going to sweat off or be disrupted um, in the heat. And so I'm also adding SPF into my skincare routine which I want everybody who is a person of color, whether you are black, is really whatever the case, if you have deeper skin tone. So if you are my complexion and darker, and maybe even a little bit lighter than me, you need to wear sunscreen. It is a myth that people of color do not need to wear sunscreen. We actually need to wear it more than people who are not considered people of color because we are high, we have a higher likelihood to have hyperpigmentation if we get a pimple or a bug bite, any type of skin disruption on our face. And if we pick at it or whatnot, we're more likely to have discoloration or a scar left behind due to that blemish or whatever the case may be. With that being said, when you go into the sun, the skin, the skin, the sun exacerbates any dark circles that you have on your skin because it, I don't know all the science. I do. I just don't remember the names for everything. So um, essentially, our, our dark spots will get darker in the sun without skin care, without SPF. So please ensure that you're doing SPF protection when you go out in your daily run. And for people of color, hyperpigmentation correction. So if you're going to a dermatologist or if you want to get a surgery, you will have more scarring as you get any type of procedure, which again, puts you at a higher risk for having dark, dark spots with those corrective activities. So you can use things like niacinamide and other um, attributes, add-ons to whatever your routine is to reduce hyperpigmentation, but to also add sunscreen so that any hyperpigmentation, any dark spots that you have will not get darker. And when you use niacinamide and other um other hyperpigmentation correcting items. Niacinamide is the first one on my list because I know that's specifically something people use for dark circles to lighten them and eventually get rid of them. Um, if you're using lotions or if you use it as a direct application onto the hyperpigmentation area, um, your skin might be a little bit sensitive. So you do want to use some protection to ensure that you're not having your skin be agitated because you are using something else on the skin um, to help correct those dark areas. So yeah, I learned that from um, Dr. Stevens on YouTube. So that's really what I've been doing um, with myself when I've been at home is trying to educate myself more on skin and how to take care of it and makeup just in general and skin wasn't ever something I was really concerned about because um thankfully a person who's blessed that doesn't have um any skin conditions like acne or um psoriasis or eczema I don't have any of those skin conditions but I do have hyperpigmentation, so I was curious on what I could do to reduce um, the hyperpigmentation around this area of my skin, and um, and I wanted to get advice from a doctor of color because the way you treat a person who's not considered a person of color versus a person who has 
skin of a colored person is going to be different. You can't treat the skin the same way. It's not going to react. Um, we have we have different issues. Our skin takes scar in different ways. So I wanted to get the opinion of a person of color, a doctor who specializes in skin for people of color. And I found two doctors. I found Dr. Stevens on YouTube and um, another doctor. She is of Indian descent and I apologize. I can't remember her name right at the moment, but both of the doctors are very, very knowledgeable and their primary clientele are people of color and they specialize in treating the skin with different conditions and hyperpigmentation being one of their major focuses for both doctors. So um, they gave really good tips. They explained the importance of sunscreen, why people of color should wear it, how it's a myth that we should not wear it, um, and also go into good recommendations for um, sunscreens for people of color that don't leave that um, white cast over the skin. And essentially, if you are a person of color and you don't want that white cast that sunscreen tends to leave, you would go with a mineral sunscreen. And mineral sunscreens tend not to leave the cast behind and they are much better for the environment. So, um, yeah. Chemical ones, they also work too. They're more harmful to the environment. I might have said that incorrectly. I will have to go back and look, so I might edit that part out. But, um, yeah. So I'm just putting the concealer in all the places. And this time, I that was a whole side note, but essentially what I am going for is trying to get concealers that have a peach undertone and the reason i've started doing that is peach undertones are supposed to help in neutralizing redness um in dark circles so it's like a color corrector within your concealer um so it gets the job versus if you just get a light concealer it essentially is just there to brighten it doesn't really do anything as far as like correcting um, any discoloration that you have up under your eyes. And so that's what I'm doing. And I really like this color because I feel like it blended in seamlessly. It's not necessarily giving me a lot of brightness, which I'm fine about. And if you wanted it to be brighter, you would just use a lighter um, concealer. And I don't know if you've seen other um, influencers or makeup artists, sometimes you see them using two concealers. I'd be like, why are they using so much concealer? But essentially what they're doing is they're color correcting and brightening at the same time. So for me, this color is still lighter than my foundation, but as you can see, it's not necessarily giving me too much brightness. It's a little bit more now since I added a second coat on. But previously, I just added a very thin coat and essentially that first coat or that first color is just to go in and correct some of those dark circles, dark veins or marks or whatever you have up under your eye. And then they give like a little dot of a very light one and that's to give you coverage or highlight or it's to brighten. They do it to brighten you in those areas. For me... As you can see, I don't necessarily look very bright, so I'm actually going to pull my other, my lighter um, concealer. All right, you guys, so just for some brightness, I went and got my original um, Pat McGrath concealer that I had been using, which was LM14, and it was just a tad bit light for me. Um... And so, like I said, I had got a color that was a little bit more, um, a little bit closer with peach undertones in it for color correcting. But um, I realized that I wanted some more brightness around to bring light to my face to certain areas and essentially just highlight. So don't know if I've ever explained this, but the purpose of placing concealer in these spots is to bring color and light 
to certain areas of the face. And when you bring light to your face, it makes you look more radiant, more alive in a sense. So that's why you see people putting concealer in these areas is because they want to give the appearance of being more radiant, bring color to the face, bring color to the high points of your face. So people focus in those areas. And just with that little bit, I can see a difference. And I don't, I don't do heavy concealer. And that's one of the things that I like about the Pat McGrath um, concealer is that it's a very hydrating formula. So if you're a person who has drier skin, um, this would be a good found, excuse me, a good concealer for you. And a technique that I have to try out, and I think I tried it in another video, is to let the concealer dry down some before you start moving it. But the last time I did it, I did not have success. However, I realized that I did try it with a concealer that was not hydrating. So you have it's something that you do with a hydrating concealer. And essentially, you're supposed to be able to get more um, coverage with um, once you let your concealer dry down a little bit. And I just haven't tried it since, since I didn't have a great experience with it that last time. So I'm going to use my LYS Triple Fix Translucent Powder, Setting Powder in Brilliance, which is Banana. And I have really come to love this setting powder um, because it's a yellow color, so I get to add brightness. I'm not really a translucent um, powder type person. I don't want to put a lot of powder um, on my skin. And it's not because I have dry skin or anything like that. I just am not a person who likes to be heavy handed with my products that I used. So for me, I feel like I try to use products that are going to do double duty in a sense. And I really like this LYS formula um, because it's very lightweight. And I think even though it is a banana color, it comes off it gives color, but it's not a super amount of color, but it's not white. So it has enough color to do something, but not enough color to alter anything, if that makes sense. It's just enough for me. I guess that's a better way to put it. And I'm just going to put powder around my nose, setting powder around my nose, because as I get older, I'm noticing that I'm starting to have oils form around my T-zone. So where before I've always been more dry to normal skin type, as I age, I'm starting to see more, um, more oils appear in my T-zone. So I think I'm slowly crossing over from um, normal to combination skin. In the wintertime, my skin is still very dry, um, but I still, like I said, will see oils peek through right in my nose area. So I do make an effort to try to set around my nose um, just to reduce any oils that may appear in that area. I also put it in the T-zone. and around my mouth, anywhere where I have smile lines. I have also noticed that I will occasionally sweat above my lips these days, so weird. But as you age, your body changes and you have to be on board to adjust with those changes. So, And I noticed that's something that my mom does as well. So it might be hereditary as well. All right. 
And so next I'm going in with the LYS No Limits Matte Bronzer and I have the color Courage, which is a tan color. Um, and like I said, I'm really liking these. I like this color because this is more of a neutral color. So for me, I like bronzer and that's typically what I use. And this is still considered a bronzer, but because it's more neutral, I feel like this is more of a contour. And um, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Um, it gives me the best of both worlds, I guess you could say. So I have the option to layer it and make it heavy if I want to or leave it light. And it still will be somewhat semi-reflective of a bronzer. And so... I'm taking this old BH Cosmetics, and they don't sell this brush individually. It's actually part of a set. However, um, they do have a brush that you can buy individually, and I'll have that link down below. That is very similar. It's not the same brush, but it's very similar. And I've started, actually, I used to use my trachea, this part of your ear right here as my um, directive, but I've actually started going above the trachea to do my contour these days just to give myself a more lifted effect and I like that and I go typically to the center of my eye which is right here and then bronze all the way around the perimeter of my forehead and what I really like about this product is that I feel like you have good control over how much product that you use it's very easy to work with if you're a person who is new to makeup and you want to use a bronzer but you don't want something that's so super pigmented um, or you're a person who tends to be heavy handed. I think this is a good bronzer for you to have because it's very good at letting you control the amount of product that you lay your own and how dark or light you want it to be. It's very lightweight and very controllable. So that's what I like about it. And if you see me looking off over to the side, I'm looking at the camera. So please forgive me if you're wondering why is she never looking at the camera. It's because I'm looking at the mirror. One thing I will say, though, is I feel like sometimes the color looks a little bit different depending on the foundation that you use so just kind of be cognizant of that it's i don't think that the product itself changes um i think it's just when you're looking at yourself in a mirror and you're seeing how your foundation color and your bronzer play together um it makes a difference And as usual, I'm going ahead and bronzing this chin so it looks like I lose a couple of pounds on my face. I feel like I might have went a little too high on this side. But I feel a little extra today. I think I want a deeper contour than what I usually go for just because, and that's okay. I think that's the beauty of makeup. You have the control to make it what you want it to be, whether you want it to be heavy or light. And then if you're a person who has thin lips and you wanna make it look fuller, you can put some bronzer 
up under here and it'll give you the illusion that you have fuller lips. So, just going to bronze my nose. And I'm just using the same brush today. I do have a smaller brush. Or if you don't have a smaller, like, nose brush that you typically use you can use a eyeshadow brush and I just bring that color up and that's kind of like a good trick if you're um, in a rush to go somewhere and you don't have a lot of time you can bring your bronzer color into your um, eyeshadow area to give you some depth of color um so that way you won't you'll look a little bit more put together and so all i'm going to do is take my sponge and go over my little nose here in the middle make sure i didn't bronze my little bridge away make sure my tip is still there and then Another trick, you guys, is if you go a little bit darker in the area, so I feel like I have a little bit too much on this side, I'm just going to take some more powder and go across it. And you can just take your sponge to kind of blend away that harsh line. If I didn't feel like it was blended in that area, so I'm just taking my sponge and I'm taking the side where I had the powder and just blending it over. And you see how there's no longer that line, but you can see the gradient. And I feel like LYS has replaced my other powders because I really like the lightweightness of this powder. And I like the fact that I can layer this powder. Layering powders is something that is relatively important, especially if you're a person who likes to be heavier on your contours or your bronzers and if you make a mistake sometimes instead of trying to go back in and fix it and going over everything with um, foundation or whatnot if it gets too heavy I feel like this powder is light enough to go back in and go over it and fix that harsh line that you may have and it's going to give you some color back, but it's not going to be so much that you're starting to look ghostly. I feel like this gives you a natural finish. And then as you can see where this was coming up a lot further, I just put some powder on it and pressed it in. And as you can see that this area down here, it's brought it down some. And that's how I like to correct my bronzers if I feel like I've done too much or I've done the most. Um, and then you can just go up under it with the powder as well and just try to blend that line in if you feel like it's a little bit too harsh. And remember, we'll be putting on blush. So that will go on top too so it won't look as harsh. All right. And so now we're going to set our face. So I'm going to be using the Beauty Bakery Sweet Grace Setting Spray. Shaking it well. And I actually really, really like this setting spray. I hadn't had like a fine mist setting spray before. Well, I take that back. I did have one, which was the Rare Beauty. And I'm really liking this spray. Um, it has a light scent, so if you're a person who doesn't like scent at all, then you might want to skip it, but it is very, very light. It's not something that stays on throughout the whole day. You'll be smelling scent and spray. It's not strong like that at all. It's just a nice fragrance um, that you smell while you're, when you spray it, even pouncing the sponge on my face, I don't smell it anymore, so... Just thought I would note that. But I do like this spray. And you've always heard me say in my previous videos that I don't like the spray spray directly on my face. However, I have tried that a couple of times with this particular setting spray. And it's relatively okay. I still overall don't like it. 
like the feeling of it just going all over my face. However, in a rush, the mist is fine enough where if I need to rush and I don't have time to like tap it in, um, it's not super uncomfortable. But since I have time to press it into my skin, I'm going to do like I always do um, because that's what I like. And I feel like it's more effective when you spray setting spray all over your face. If there are any areas in your face that the setting spray doesn't hit, then, you know, that's that area is essentially left unprotected from the setting spray. However, if you spray your sponge or even if you spray your face and then go over it with a sponge, you're ensuring that all of the product that you put on your face or put on your sponge is evenly distributed across your face. And so that way you get more setting power. And I feel, and since I do double set, I feel like the likelihood that you'll have any movement of your makeup is very, very low, slim to none. If you're a person who's more on the oilier side with your skin, then you may have, you know, dispersion of your makeup over time simply because your oils come through on your skin and break up the makeup. So, that's just something to know. And if you are an oilier person, then you want to use more powder to set. Where for me, like I said, I'm more of a normal combination type skin right now. I'm more on the combination dry side, not necessarily oily. Um, I don't have that issue. It's more so for me when I sweat. So that's why I double set um, my face. And so that's had a moment to dry down. And I also like the way it comes together. I feel like my skin looks more airbrushed when I go in with a sponge on top of my setting spray because I really feel like it works to melt everything into the skin. And so right now I feel like I look pretty bronzed. I Like I said, I like the fact that this is a little bit more neutral. It's not as warm. So I feel like I have more of a contouring effect um, versus a bronzer. And when you contour, you would contour down here versus up here. Typically, you bronze up here so your face looks more lifted. What, what is this little throw down? Okay. Um, typically, you would contour right here where I was saying the trachis. And I go down, as you can see. Our line is our contour, excuse me, our bronzer is up here. So when you put it up here, your face has a more lifted look with bronzer because it's only supposed to make you look like you've been hit by the sun. When you put darker colors and contour is typically much cooler, much darker. When you put your colors right here, it gives you the appearance of a sculpt look. So your face will look more like, like that. And you can kind of see it. This side goes a little bit lower. I need to actually fix that. But it goes a little bit farther in. So when I do this, you can actually see where it goes down a little bit here. And that's supposed to give you that sculpted look. I'm going to go ahead and do my eyebrows. Um, I'm going to be using the Fenty Beauty Brow MVP. And I have the color brown black. Only when I want to change the shape of my brows do I put um, more effort into them than I usually would, but since I'm just following my natural round shape of my eyebrows, really it's to go in and make this part right here relatively even because they're a little sparse per se in that area in comparison to the rest of my brows. But really it's just about cleaning them up and making them look neat. So I was noticing when I was doing my eyebrows, I was having like a lot of flaking around my eyebrows and I was looking closer into the mirror and it looks like this foundation is breaking apart on my skin. I don't know if you can see that, but around this area here, um, 
it's breaking down already and I haven't had this on for more than like 30 minutes I'm only 49 minutes into recording but I haven't had foundation on that long so I can see it breaking down around my eyebrows I can see it already creasing in my nose area I don't know if it's captured on camera but yeah I can see the foundation is already breaking down so I will not be repurchasing this in a different color yeah and that's interesting because I use the Huda Beauty jelly primer and I've used that with other foundations and I didn't have any issues whatsoever and the Huda Beauty jelly primer is the primer is a Huda Beauty product so I'm quite shocked about this that it would break down on top of the actual primer of the same company and they were marketed together they were re released around the same time to be used in conjunction with each other so I'm wondering was it just me brushing my eyebrows but that wouldn't account for why it's breaking down right here um, around my nose I'm wondering if it doesn't play nice with the YSL powder and I've used my YSL powder several times and never had any issues with YSL powder and that's what I've been using in all my videos so from afar you can't see it it looks fine but up close on my face I can actually see see it breaking down so um yeah just something to note all right so I'm gonna go in with my Fenty Beauty um, Pro Filter Invisible Amplifying Eye Primer um and we're going to go ahead and start our eyeshadow look. And I'm just going to use my fingers to blend that in. And I always go all the way up to my eyebrow. Um, I don't typically put eyeshadow all the way up there anymore. But in the event, I feel like that, that area will be covered. And as per usual, we're going to be using our BH Cosmetics Gemstone Palette Aquamarine for March. Yay! And these are the colors for this month. So we have Amethyst, excuse me. So we have Aquamarine here. Then we have Affectionate, Daydreamer, Slight Shot slightly shy here secretive big heart and jet setter so i think we have i actually really like this palette because i like the fact that they give you some relatively neutral colors here in this palette and then you can add pops of color or you have the ability just to use all pops of color so I, I like the fact that this gives you variety very much. When I was thinking about this palette, I was really thinking about how am I going to use this palette? Um, aquamarine and blues are definitely not colors I use on a regular basis. So I was kind of unsure about what I was going to do for this look. However, I do feel like they give you a lot of items to work with um, in this palette. Um, I'm going to swatch them just because from previous um, uses of these palettes, um, I want to make sure that the colors, I want to know what the colors look like before I'm working with them. Are they the same as they are in the pan or do they come off a little bit differently when you apply them? So let's do that. First, I'm going to do aquamarine. Oh, that's a very pretty color. I'm going to do it twice. I like that color. Then we're going into Affectionate. I'm actually shocked that color showed up on me. And then we're going into Daydreamer. Then we're going into Slightly Shy. I'm 
I like that color a lot. Then we're going to go into the color secretive. Oh, I like that color. That's a nice transition color. Then we're going to go into the color big heart. And one of my closest friends, Enmia. Oh, that's very pretty. Enmia, happy belated birthday. Um, her birthday is in March. And just going through these names of the palette, they really remind me of her personality. Um, so I do think these are appropriately named. Oh, it's really pretty. And again, this is Jet Setter. And they always have one color in the palette that's mostly glitter. And so this is what it looks like. I like that quite a bit. Um, the colors actually come off as how they're how they are in the pan. So I have several thoughts in mind. Um, let's see. I think I want to do an exaggerated wing with this palette. And I like this color here. And I like this color here. And I think I'll use this color. So we're gonna play around and see how they go. Okay, you guys, I already started, but before I finish, I'm gonna take some loose powder from Fenty Beauty. I'm gonna take the banana powder. I'm sorry if I'm blinding y'all and the top, top is dirty, but um, essentially I'm going to, before I start doing any eyeshadow, since we're using relatively um, bright colors, I'm going to tap some loose powder down so if we have any fallout, I can just easily wipe it away. And I chose the color banana because essentially this is going to be baking my eye up under here um, while this is going on. And I know it's going to end up lightening some up under here um and i'm using banana because i don't want it to be so ghostly light when i finish but this is a trick you can do if you're like me i don't like to do my foundation after i do my eyeshadows i like to do my foundation first so when you do your foundation first you have to put some extra powder in order to catch any fallout if you're doing like dark colors like blue or black or anything like that um, or either you can just do your eyeshadow first and then add your um, foundation. I know some people are dry around this area. So baking for a prolonged period of time or putting excess powder up under your eyes is not ideal um, due to the fact that you're dry because you don't want it to look super dry right in that area. So we're going to go into our look that I'm thinking about doing. I've never done before. So we're going to see how this turns out. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding a dot of concealer. Um, and I'm doing that because I want the truest color payoff from this color um, I'm about to put over my lid. And I'm just putting this over. The... Um, eyeshadow base that I have before might have put too much concealer on this side but it's super tacky anyway so I want the truest color payoff so that's why I went over it with a bit of um concealer first all the brushes that I'm going to be using going forward are from colored rain and this is what they look like. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. It's from a black owned business. And I'm using the round shadow brush. And I'm gonna go into the color secret right here. And lay this down, okay. This is really going to be nude nude, okay.
So essentially what I'm doing is I'm covering my whole eyelid with this color secretive. And I'm just picking up the product and I'm pressing and sliding against my lid. And I'm doing several coats of this color because I do want you to be able to see that there is a color there. I don't want it to look like there's nothing on the lid. So I'm going in with a couple of layers of this color. And I learned the press and slide technique from Dress Your Face. I did go to one of her seminars and got Dress Your Face certified a couple of years ago. And this was one of the techniques that she showed in her seminar. When you do this technique, you get the most color payoff you can out of a color. So that lets me know that this color is just that close to my skin tone. This is like a true neutral for me. All right, and so for the start of the show, we're going to go in with Slightly Shy, this color right here. And we're going to go ahead and spray our brush. We're gonna use our liner brush here. And I'm going to spray it with um, Setting Spray just to make it wet. I have a little bit too much on there. But essentially we do that. So when we go into this color, we're gonna get the truest payoff and we won't have to go in so many times with it so it'll pick up color. We want it to pick up on the first time around the block. And I'm just going to start to line my eyes with it. I like that color a lot. And for me, I tend to start in the middle of my eye, in the middle of my eye, and then go towards the tip because some of the product will have, um, well, the inner corner of my eye because some of the product will have worn off. And you're less likely to get like that glob of a line right at the, um, tip of your eye, which is kind of hard to blend out in that small space. And then I'll just go over it to build up the color in that area. Excuse me, that also allows that if you had, <coughs> excuse me, got choked a little bit. If you had, <coughs> excuse me, Excuse me, got choked on saliva. Um, whew. what was I saying? Um, oh, if you spray your brush with an excessive amount of um setting spray, like I did, that also helps to ensure that you don't get all of that setting spray right here, which would go into your eye as well. We don't want our eyes burning if we can control it. And so at this point, I'm just bringing it up as a wing. And now I'm going to bring that wing in. I'm just going to make that little outline. And that's another reason why I use one of these little liner brushes because you have control and precision. And because I have hooded eyes, I have to bring mine above. How? Y'all, you see I got eyeshadow right here up under 
up under my um not laugh. I don't know how I got eyeshadow up under my powder all the way down. That could have been happening. That could have happened when I coughed. So at this point, we're just building up the color. And we want a thick line in this area. And I'm going to start bringing it above. There we go. So we can see it. And I'm just going to fill in. So this area right here on the outer part of the crease. And I'm just going to continue to use my liner brush just because I want to stay in control of this. And so this look is a labor of love, you guys. So, and this is also my first time doing it. So it's going to take some time. And I know a lot of people wonder like why my videos are so long, but I don't like to edit out anything when I'm doing my eyeshadow because I don't want people to have this unrealistic expectation that these looks that creators do or that any of us people who post looks to YouTube or anything like that. I want y'all to know that it takes time to do these looks. It's not just a 20 minute look. The video was only 20 minutes because of editing. And so that's something that I want people to understand and to know that if you want to create this look, it's not a fast look to create by any means. So, ooh, I really like the way that came out. We got a nice sharp wing over there. And I didn't want anything too big around this area if you want to. Now, when you look at me at different angles, you can't see it. If you look this way, you can see it. If I go down like that, you can't see it. So I'm going to bring it up just a tad bit. And that's something to be aware of. Again, if you have hooded eyes, you have to bring your looks up higher to be seen to get around that hood of your eye. All right, so now we can see it. And so now I'm gonna focus on the inner part. I want that just a hair thicker, not too thick in this area but just enough to be seen. All right, fantastic. All right, so I like the way that looks. I'm feeling like this middle part is a little empty, so we might go back in and fill that in with Jet Setter, just to give us some um, excitement in the middle, or we might do Aquamarine, we'll see. All right, and so now I'm gonna take this same liner brush and I'm going to start going up under, excuse me, going up under my waterline. And I like to get in real close to my waterline. And I'm going to take that all the way two thirds into my eye. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more on the tip of my brush. All right.
fantastic I like the way that came out so now I'm gonna go into aquamarine and I'm just going to apply that to the inner part of the tear duct there and I'm still using my liner brush I just wiped it off and I'm going to ooh, got a little eye booby right there not cute not cute at all come off okay and then I'm just going to do that inner third okay I like that and then bring that up to meet where our liner was beginning in the first part of our eye how do we feel you guys do we want to fill that in here let's do a little drop let's see okay that can't be seen at all pick up just a tiny smidge I think I'm feeling glitter, you guys. All right, so we'll leave aquamarine right here in this first part. And then I'm going to take my finger and go into Jet Set. But you know what? I'm going to try with a brush. I'm going to try it with a brush. I'm going to take this original round blending brush that we had. And I'm just going to wipe it off on my little, this is a BH Cosmetics sponge. Essentially, you use it when you want to clean off um, the eyeshadow on your brush. And so you don't have any transfer. The more and more I do makeup, the less brushes I want to use. And um, I don't like wearing eyeliner. So I'm going to pick it up just with the brush and see how that works. Okay, that's nothing. So I'm going to spray this with setting spray as well. And that's going to do things twofold. So essentially what that's going to do is that's going to adhere the glitter and disperse it so we won't have so much fallout. Oops. So it picked up a good amount. Oh, yes. There we go. And I'm just going to feel that into this area on top of where we had secretive. And I'm not going to go all the way up to the top because I don't want any glitter to transfer on our liner up there. And I'm going to get as close to the edge as possible. And I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm going to pick up some more. And I'm only going to pick up some on the tip. And then just kind of pack it into this corner area and then again up here in this corner area oh I like that a lot that's just right that's just right and I might go back up under my eyes in a little bit and smudge this out just a little bit more just so we can have more color payoff down there on the bottom. Let's see. But I'll do that after we finish doing the other eye. Yay! All right. So to our other eye, back to our pencil liner. And then we're going to spray. And then if it's any excess, any droplets, just tap it off on a napkin. And then we're going to start off again here in the color Slightly Shy. And how I do mine is I kind of roll my brush around in it so it can saturate down the length of the brush. And I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can. So 
Um, since the whole brush gets saturated when you spray it, I literally roll the brush in there. And again, I start in the middle of my eye. And then go out. And then I will go to the front of my eye. And then pull it back in. Because again, I don't want the, um, I don't want to put it directly on my eye after I've applied the product because the brush has the, has the setting spray on it. Ow, that was my whole eye. Um, it has the setting spray on it. And so I don't want to distribute that so close up here and it runs the risk of falling in my eye. And so we're just going to bring that back out into a wing like we did on this side. And all I did was literally follow the natural shape of my eye. All right, and then I go past my actual fold and then start to bring it in. And remember we made that outline first so we would know where to apply the eyeshadow. And then we're just going to build it up from there. And remember, we have to go a little bit above. Since I have hooded eyes, I have to go above my hood in order to be able to see the color payoff. Because when you have hooded eyes, it can your color can get lost in the hood. So you have to go above your hood. And then I'm going to spray some more. And if you're ever curious to know, you know, how much to spray or when to spray it on your brush, when you feel your brush starting to tug at your skin, it's not picking up the product. So we know that in order for this color to show up, we have to apply the setting spray. And so in order to do that, you can feel it tugging on your skin when you need to add more setting spray. And so I'm just going to look ahead into the mirror. And then I'm just going to, and I actually lift my eyebrows a little bit in order to get in that area above my crease. Because when I'm relaxed like this, I can't really see it. And you risk the transfer getting onto your lid. So I lift my eyebrow up then go above and then bring it in. And now at this point, we're just trying to make them even. So I'm looking at myself. And so I'm gonna bring this out, this line out just a smidge.
So now let's fix this outer perimeter. And we didn't have any fallout, you guys, except for where I had my coffin tag. So I'm going to take the small blending brush and I'm just going to go into secretive, which was that initial color that we used. And I'm going to tap off the excess and I'm just going to lift my eyebrows and blend it into the area because I don't want to blend this line out because I like the neatness of the line. So I'm blending around it just to clean up that area on the outside so it looks more smooth. And I'm just taking a light, gentle hand and doing that. So I'm going to go back into secret again and then tap off the excess and do the same on this side. I'm lifting my eyebrows to make sure that I can get into all of this space. And I'm just going to apply that color until any part of what we were showing with concealer has disappeared. And I actually, at first, I was kind of disappointed by this color, but now I'm actually glad <laughs> that that color exists because for me, it's the perfect cover-up color in a sense. Like I said, I usually don't bring my eyeshadow up that far, but today I'm glad that I put eyeshadow primer all the way up there. All right. <clears throat> okay, you guys. And so now I'm going to put on some false lashes. Before I put on the false lashes, though, I'm going to go in with my large blending brush where I had the powder. And I'm just wiping off all that excess powder. And I'm literally going to go in and gently sweep away. Okay, and you see how light that made me. And this is one of the things that I don't like about... Um... So I'm going to just rub that down the bridge of my nose here. And that's one of the things I don't like about certain banana colors is that they make you so, so, so light up under the eyes. And this is a little bit um, light <laughs> for my personal liking. But what I am going to do is just to clean up because it looks like it's a little puffy right there. And we have a little bit right there. I'm going to take some concealer and just go in and straighten up that line. <laughs> go in with LM16 and literally just put the smallest. That's all I need. I don't even... It's too much. <clears throat> and literally just clean up that edge. And so <clears throat> I'm going to take our brush that we had and I'm going to flip over my sponge because if it has any glitter still left on it, I don't want to paint glitter into And literally all we're doing is just cleaning up this line here. Making it sharp. And you can always add <clears throat> more concealer if you need to. 
I don't feel like we need to at this point. And then I'm just going to take my little sponge and then just pat, pat that in, pat everything in. So I'm going to use the Ardell Demi Wispies. These are my favorite um, drugstore brand. They're enough to give you some fluffiness to your natural eyebrow, eyebrows, your natural eyelashes, but they don't go over the top because we have a nice line up under our eyes with the um, slightly shy color. And I still want that to be able to be seen without just seeing the top because we worked really hard to line our lashes, okay? And so I'm gonna use the Lily Lash Power Liner and I'm gonna use clear. And I love using clear because clear actually dries down clear. So over this, we still should be able to see our turquoise looking color through the clear lashes. Now, because my line is rather thin, hopefully the lashes won't cover it up. So we shall see. And I'm using clear because I don't want to use black. I definitely know if I use black, it will definitely cover up all of this work that we did. And we don't want to, we don't want to cover that up. <clears throat> so, and why I like power liner is because it's liner and lash glue at the same time. Yes, liner and lash glue at the same time. Thus, making our work much much easier so i don't i typically don't put anything on my waterline anymore um because i feel like it's not necessarily needed especially if you're not using black and i didn't want to use black at all in this look because i want the focus to be around aquamarine and blue <clears throat> so the fact that it doubles as a liner i actually really 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 like so i'm gonna shake it up and literally you apply it just like you would liner. So you go in and just like we did earlier today, we're going to drag it across our lash line. And I tell you guys, this stuff, it really, really works. So I usually do two applications and then I already have my lashes ready to go. And you can feel it tightening up on your eyes. Like you can feel it getting tacky. And so you don't have to wait like you do with other um, lash glues. Because by the time you pick up your lashes and get them situated to put on, like it's already drying down. So I'm going to get really close. I'm going to get really close and show you how I apply these. And I'm going to look down at my mirror down here and try to stay up high enough for you guys to see it. All right. And they're on and so now you're just going to go in and I actually have lash applicators I do not use tweezers and just like that they're on and then we can still see our line through it once I do this side I'm going to go in with some mascara just to blend my lashes into them because they're a little dusty from all of the eyeshadow that we used earlier and that'll be it. All right. And now we're going to put on some mascara on my real lashes because I don't know if you can tell, but my real lashes are covered in turquoise and they look light and white up under there. And I'm just going to use this Maybelline Sky High Lashes. Um, I actually really, really like this Maybelline New York. I use these on my regular lashes when I don't wear falsies and... My eyelashes look good under them. All right. So essentially, I'm just making my lashes black. And you can tell the difference already. This is much darker than this side over here. And that's because my actual natural lashes were um, discolored 
from the eyeshadow. All right, and now we're gonna move the lips. All right, you guys, I'm just gonna take a wipe and I'm going to remove all of this dead skin going on on my lip. All right, I'm going to take my Juvia's Place liner in So Rare. And this is pretty much the only liner that I use at this point. And I think today, I'm just going to go with pink gloss. And I'm not a person who overlines my lips. I feel like my lips are already naturally uh, full. So I don't overline my lips or anything like that. And then I'm going to use this Juvia's Place Gloss in the color So Rare. You can see it's a real nudie pink. So hopefully it will tie into, okay, it's going to tie into our eyeshadow up there. Ooh, I like the way that smells. This is my first time using it. I really like the way that smells. All right, you guys, I'm going to use um, the Melt Blush Light in Sundown. So I discovered this color years ago, and I cannot seem to keep this color. Every time I have this color, it always shatters. I don't know why it ends up on the floor, but it's actually one of my favorite like highlight blushes, in a sense, because I love the color of it. It's kind of like a rose gold color and it's like a natural flush of color with the highlight already built into it and I haven't been doing highlight too much lately but for me this is kind of like a good middle for both and it's real subtle and you can build it up And after I put it on, I just like to use my finger to kind of disperse it because I can get really, really heavy handed with this color very quickly. And it's not like a super huge glow or anything like that. It's kind of like a glow from within. And the more you put on, the more you can see it. So that's why I try to make sure I use my fingers to disperse this because I will get super happy super quickly. Like this is a color that really shows up in the sunlight. You don't really see it too much inside, but when you go out, you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. But you can definitely tell I've added some color to my cheeks. So, how do we like? I really like how this came out. My eyes are definitely, my eyes are definitely the star of the show. And I love it. I love how everything else just blends into the look. And I don't feel like my eyes are overdone, even though we have glitter, even though we have an exaggerated line. It's still subtle in its own way. So. So this is the final look, you guys. I had to hit you with the slow motion of the look. I think it turned out fantastically. It's something very new and very different for me, but I absolutely love it. If you like this look, please 
hit the subscribe button below so we can keep these tutorials coming. Drop me some comments if you like these tutorials, what you want to see. Keep me posted. I look forward to seeing you all until the next time. Bye, my loves.